as reactions continue to trail Twitter suspension in Nigeria, we take a deep dive into its effect on the people, the economy and the polity. A PDP chieftain tells us when banditry would end if the federal government sponsors factional bandits. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Hannibal. Days after the Nigerian government announced the indefinite suspension of Twitter, reactions are still trailing the development. Netblocks and International Internet Monitor stated that an estimated 2 billion naira has been lost to the ban on Twitter by the Nigerian government. In a statement, the Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami said he had directed for immediate prosecution of offenders telling the public prosecutor to swing into action. And while responding, human rights activist, senior advocate of Nigeria, Michael Zekome, asked the federal government to get ready to build more prisons to accommodate erring Nigerians who are likely to bypass the ban on Twitter usage. Well, joining me to have this conversation is Confidence Stavely. She is a tech expert and a cybersecurity expert. Also is Kalawale Oluwadari. He is of Serap. And also joining us via telephone is Shegu Shopita of ACT Network. Thank you very much, gentlemen and lady. Thank you very much. Thank Great. you so much for having us. All right. I'm going to start with um, Confidence because she's a tech expert. So a lot of I've been in tech forums for the past two days talking about um, how what this means for those who use Twitter as a place for their businesses and um, how much money Nigeria has lost as a country. But again, let's start by talking about the fact that people are using VPNs. Until now, I probably, most of us probably wouldn't know what a VPN is. And explain to us, give us a background into how these VPNs work and if there are any downsides to it. So um, I got exactly the same kind of text message from my father yesterday. He wrote me, I was like, oh, your Twitter generation, why are you coping? It just been banned. By the way, what is VPN? So I'm going to answer that question the way I answered my father. Um, VPN is is, a, is um, the acronym for virtual private networks. Uh, I mean, back in the day when we used to play with um, with um, tissue rolls and things, we would make the tissue roll into a tube, like we would combine them together. So one person is going to have one at their ear, and then the other person is going to have the other side at their ear, or at their mouth. So the other person will speak and the other person will hear, but through that tunnel only. So. Think about that tunnel we used to create as children. I don't know if you played as much as I did, but I created one of those. Think about it where one person is speaking and one person is listening. But on both ends, if you, are, you don't have that channel on your ear or on your mouth, you will not be able to communicate the time. Um, other people also, outside of that environment, that do not have that connector will also not be able to hear or speak to either of you. So that's, that's exactly what a VPN is. You have communications from end to end, but they are only passed through a tunnel which allows um, outsiders not to be able to eavesdrop on that communication. So it, on its own, a VPN is actually a security tool because it helps you ensure that you are, co you are communicating confidentially on the internet, which means that no other person can eavesdrop on your conversation. So for example, if I'm, I'm on a public Wi-Fi, it's advised by security experts like myself that if I want to carry out confidential or very sensitive transactions like use my bank app, then I should get, a, get on a VPN on a public Wi-Fi. So hackers around will not be able to get and sniff out the data that I'm transmitting. So actually a VPN before this time has other uses apart from, you know, um, transmitting yourself in seconds to another country, which is now the use um, that is currently in this case being used for. So a VPN has many other uses. One of them is what we are currently using now, which includes being able to use another server, bounce off traffic around the internet, and make it seem like somebody is in another location apart from the location they currently are in. But the primary use of a, a VPN is actually privacy. 
is it safe? Entity. Because the question everybody's asking is, is it safe? Because we've seen all kinds of messages all through the weekend saying, oh, mm -hmm. do not open your bank app if you're using a VPN. Do not do this. Oh, it has downsides. Is it really safe? Because what the picture you're painting to me is that it is it, it ensures some form of privacy. But how safe is that privacy? Is my information safe under that tunnel or will it come back to bite me in the back? Okay, it depends on what kind of VPN. So it's still subjective. It's not a yes or no answer. Um, so a lot of people now, because of the rush of what's happening, people are downloading uh, free VPNs. Now with the free VPNs as well, you're not sure about what, um, you've not read the privacy policy most likely. You don't know what the underlying technology is. Um, most of them are just set up as proxies that may not be accountable per se. So I would definitely not advise someone to randomly download a free VPN right now. But for the more, the more trusted version, the more trusted VPNs that usually require you to pay some for, which, for example, will also not have place, will not place advertisements on those platforms, are a whole lot more secure and can ensure that privacy is uh, privacy um, assurance is on a very, very high level as well. So I would say that either buy a VPN that you pay for, um, usually they'll be from a good service provider, or use a VPN or virtual private network as part of the features of already existing security software that you have. For example, some um, some um, some antiviruses have that feature as a VPN being part of its features. Some password managers as well also have a VPN as part of its features. In that context, a VPN is way safer. Huh. I'm going to come back to you because uh, there's more news as, as it concerns Twitter and other, you know, tech issues that um, Kolawale and Shegun might not be able to talk about, but we will put you on pause. Let me come to Kolawale. Kolawale, the Serap was one of the first organizations that took up the federal government on the issue of the ban of Twitter over the weekend. Um, Serap, like I always say, is always on his toes, you know with a lot of lawsuits, you know, against either the federal government or some parastatals or governors. Um, why did Serap think that it was okay to um, take the federal government on? I mean, the federal government has said that they're doing this in the interest of unity of the country, as there are people who seek to, you know, break down that unity that we once used to enjoy. Thank you. The first and foremost, because we are in Nigeria, and users of, of Twitter, not only to do our advocacy, but also to um, get information from uh, the cyberspace. And we believe that what the uh, Minister of Information has done, of course, is unlawful. And the law is clear in that regard. One need not be a senior lawyer to understand that a minister cannot make law. A minister is not a member of the National Assembly. That is why we have over 400 people there to do that job. And so by a public statement, a minister cannot create an offense. And in the same, uh, in the same statement, uh, try to punish people uh, by that uh, public statement. And that is why we have said that we're going to go to court to challenge the ban of suspension or whatever name you want to call it. And thereafter, we've seen the subsequent events that uh, Lend credence to the unjustifiability of that act by the government. Let me let me pick out some of the things that have been major headlines. Um, the NBC, which is the body that controls the media in Nigeria, had put out a press statement saying um, that all media houses should suspend their Twitter handles. This is because certain media houses were still using their Twitter handles to post their stories because again. Um, social media is now the next big thing. It's gone from you buying newspapers at some newspaper stands to reading it off the palm of your hands. Uh, but then t t the NBC has said all, p all media houses should suspend that and, and, and not even make reference to Twitter, um, you know, um, anything that somebody posted on Twitter. Um, and th this, again, has gotten a lot of eyebrows raised because people are wondering um, why this should be a directive from um, the NBC. But, of course, the NBC is trying to make sure that people adhere um, to the government um, 
the ban on Twitter. Now, again, um, Malami, the Attorney General of the Federation, has come out to say that he's going to prosecute those who are um, offenders, those who have bypassed the system, to continue to tweet. Um, how does that even work? And what would be written on the statement if I were to be arrested for using Twitter, using a VPN? Um, is that legal? Is that constitutional? I, I, I really hope we didn't get arrested. <laughs> of course, the I'm just saying, if I were to be arrested. It's not. Um, again, the Attorney General is a member of the, the politician at that, even being a senior lawyer. He cannot make law. He, he cannot. He's not a member of the National Assembly. And it, it's, it's really, it beats the mind what the motive of the Attorney General is in making that statement. The law is clear in that regard. The same constitution that gives us the right to freedom of expression in Section 39 also provides for uh, the principles that underscore criminal liability in Section 36 or Section 12. And it's just simple. One, it's, it simply says that for anyone to be prosecuted for any criminal offense, such an offense must be defined beforehand in a written law. And so the question is, there is no written law in Nigeria, and written law in that context means uh, an act of the National Assembly or a law passed by the state out of assembly. In Nigeria today, as we are, there is no law that criminalizes the use of social media uh, or Twitter uh, as, as, as a platform. So when the Attorney General said he was going to prosecute, it, 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 to, it, it really it's the, the important question to ask is, on that one law, uh, someone will prosecute them. And to, 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 to keep in mind that law, the way laws are stated, the law creates an offense and it creates a punishment. And that is why a judge cannot punish an offender without looking at the statute books as the minimum or highest recommended penalty. So in this instance, in the absence of a law that should substantiate a charge, what, what will the judge use as to pronounce either obviously guilty or even prescribe, prescribe the punishment, it cannot stand. And to go to the aspect of the NBC, I, I, I saw that statement, uh, using the word directive and advice in the same statement to broadcast uh, to media houses. Really, and, and, and this is the same NBC that has released the code that set up a challenge. We are challenging it in court on two different occasions. And this will be the thought if we go to court on this issue as well, about the propriety of the NBC code and the way the National Broadcasting Commission is using the code to stifle the freedom of expression. This, again, is just an instance of government uh, stifling conversation and, uh, and dissent. But I would say that um, this is not a major reaction like some would think. This is a well thought out plan, even though not intended uh, positively uh, to stifle uh, the dissent of people who could perceive that other critical views of government. Ultimately, the civic space will suffer for it and uh, the participatory governance is being thrown to the dog. Okay. Uh, Shagun Shopisa is joining us uh, on the phone. Shagun, um, let's talk about um, the FIJ, um, and I'd like to quote them directly. They said that the background to this whole Twitter imbroglio started when the NSAS protest was on in 2020, and they said this protest did not just happen on the streets in Nigeria. It did happen on social media. And then social media, of course, Twitter, did give a logo of sorts to support that protest. And that was the beginning of the problems uh, of Twitter in Nigeria. In fact, the government felt a need to control the cyberspace more while we were in the thick of the NSARS movement. And now here we are, almost a year later, with sudden uh, unsolved and unanswered questions. I mean, over the weekend, we heard that a, uh, you know, a story broke of uh, bodies that were identified as some of the people who were killed um, as a result of that protest. But my question to you is, where does civil society come in here? Because the only, there seems to be a, a collaborative silence of sorts. We hardly heard any governor except the Oyo State governor who's spoken up against this, asking that the, the federal government rethink uh, this particular move. But we've not really had governors per se step up, even the governors that are in opposition. Does it seem to you that maybe our governments, whether they be of the APC or the PDP, 
are, are okay with the idea of somewhat stifling the voices of the people, especially on a platform that's very vocal as Twitter. I don't think Shegu can hear me, so I'm going to throw that question back to Kalawale. Um, Mr. Kalawale, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Maybe you'd attempt that question. You will get to the bank. Sorry, can I? Yeah. Um, so it's it's um, it, 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 it is really difficult to understand the motive of government, and that is why maybe in this instance it's best to get that motive from the various the spokesmen for the various agencies, uh, for the president and for the minister of information, and from the uh, the attorney general of the federation as to their motives. But from what we've seen. This is an attempt to, uh, to, to stop people from engaging. And as you rightly said, I think it stems from the way the engagement uh, took uh, during the NSAS protest, both pre, during the protest, and after the protest. But what government needs to understand is that engagement needs to be done by the citizens. Of course, some people may be responsible in the use of uh, platforms, but of course that doesn't give a, that doesn't uh, justify this clamp down on freedom of expression, at least not in democracy like we have in Nigeria. So it, 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 it's an ill wind that will blow no one will do it ultimately. But answers and what it has brought is what government should learn from how to positively engage. And it's interesting, quite a lot of that the Minister of Information actually tweeted on Twitter about the ban of, of Twitter. So what does that say about the EU? Even the Minister of, Minister of Defense puts out uh, updates about the fight against uh, the terrorism right there on Twitter too and on other social media platforms. So instead of uh, rushing to regulate it as it were, it is for government to understand uh, its use. And if, um, and I believe, and we've said this uh, over time and again, we have enough laws that punish any responsible use of social media. There are laws that is well that takes care of libel and defamation and defamation and there's a cyber cancer. So even though some sections of that uh, are there's also questionable though, there is no need for for this ban. Ultimately, it's not going to help anyone. And as to the government, I'm not hearing from them. I don't think we should be too surprised. I am not surprised that we will not add from the government. It would it would appear that that same attitude of the presidency also applies to the various states. And that's why we see in, in fractions on freedom of the press and freedom of expression is not related. It cuts across party, party lines and it cuts across uh, the, from the highest level of government uh, to the lowest. It is a thing that we've seen that those in government seem to fear the citizens because they feel any critical view is seen as being an opposition. Without understanding the need for that uh, conversation, even if it's not palatable. Interesting. I'll come back to you. Let me go back to confidence. Now, another story that broke today, obviously, we all woke up to the fact that um, quoting the federal government having a partnership of sorts with China um, to get a firewall of sorts, something similar to what China itself has had over the years, uh, blocking out the likes of Twitter uh, from its cyberspace. So um, what does this mean for us as a country and how long does it take to build a firewall in the first instance? Um, and is this uh, another way of um, keeping people out of not just Twitter, but maybe every other form of social media? And in the case of China, if I'm not wrong, there are options. China has its, I mean, China's tech industry is superb. Do we have anything to rival these social uh, media platforms if we were to phase them out with this firewall? Thank you so much for that very brilliant question. Um, so for start, let's understand what a firewall is in the first place. It's not, it's not fire on the wall. <laughs> um, it's actually uh, a general tool that allows um, for filtering of network traffic. So what goes into the organization and what comes out, I mean, in the context of a, of a business or an organization. Um, so the firewalls are in use, uh, again, just like VPNs currently, for protective measures. So um, it, it filters what comes in from the 
um, exterior network, which is the internet, into the interior network, which is the organization's internal network. So you see that a firewall is currently um, in use for monitoring purposes. It's also used for filtering purposes. Now, translate this to, let's say, the way a firewall works within an organization. Because you say Facebook can be destructive in your workplace, or your workplace might have policies such as, you know, you're not watching porn, because watching porn is going to, you know, sometimes download harmful code on the computers of this organization. So what happens is that they deploy a software, sorry, if I was deployed, just like every other preventive measures, and then they block out, um, you know, certain word keywords, certain words, or they block out um, certain uh, web addresses that are known to be harmful, so like porn websites. Those blocks are called rules. So those rules are what ha helps in filtering the network, filtering whatever comes in and out. Um, so the firewalls are in use. I'm just saying that to, to, to establish that firewalls are actually a security tool in use to protect people. In the context of being used with uh, the way the Nigerian government wants to use it and the way China wants to use it, or rather China uses it, it's also the same way, but filtering such a way that it censors what people can get to see, what people can get to interact with, um, um, without it, without the confines of maybe um, um, a timeline. You know, while you're in a geographic location, that rule applies to you. While you access the internet on that geographical location, it applies okay. to you. So, a, a firewall in that context really is really stifling, and it could be used in many in many ways. It could be used to, for example, monitor and be able to ensure that. Um, certain views are suppressed, and that's the scary part. Um, and, and, you, and you just it can you ensure just, that you're not able to access certain information that is vital for you to access, or you can also ensure that uh, assembly is actually um, curtailed. And these are all things that are negative. Um, okay, before you know, before before before, before you continue, about, sorry, let me just come in. You talked about monitoring, and that might just also be an infringement of our privacy and our rights. If a government has a right to monitor what we're doing, that can also mean that people can be targeted. And this, I'm sure, exactly. one way or the other, could be an infringement of our rights and it could be against the Constitution, except laws are exactly. put in place, right? Exactly, yeah. So monitoring is a big, is a big part of um, what a firewall is going to do in this context. I mean, it could monitor your private conversations that are not supposed to be listened into, um, um, you know, once they're passing through the, the web and they are not encrypted. Um, again, even if they're encrypted, it depends on what level. When I mean encrypted, that means they're locked and ensure that only the people you intend it for get it. So even, even with that, if it's a certain level of encryption, then it becomes, you know, um, um, you know really locked in. But then it, it's still, they're going to still be, going to be able to filter. So if their views or their platforms, Twitter today, it might be another platform tomorrow that people pivot to. If it doesn't agree with, the, with what the government wants to a citizen at the time to interact with them, they're definitely going to also block that as well. So it's going to be, um, uh, it's going to be, it's, we are just starting off, let me put it that way, very, okay. very nice terms. And uh, speaking about this in comparison to China, China has a well established tech industry. In fact, I, I say that this is going, this is, um, this is, this is um, um, a slow suicide for the Nigerian tech industry, what's currently happening, because not only is, is uh, investor confidence being lost, um, we know that the tech industry is currently contributing very high to the GDP of Nigeria. So if investor confidence is shaky, uh, and we're setting these shockwaves at a time when we should be recovering, when we should be attracting investment, where unemployment is an issue, and we are having a sort of um, uh, shake-up in the, the tech industry that is causing investors to pull out, it means um, people are going to be losing jobs. And we've seen it on Twitter even uh, recently. We've seen it where people are, their are developer teams are disbanded currently because investors are pulled out. We're also seeing that um, uh, uh, even the alternative platform that was once floated, we said we looked at the privacy policy of that, uh, of that uh, network and we saw that it, it literally felt like having your bath outside because privacy is out the roof with this wow. particular indigenous platform that we have, and the only one of, of that. So uh, really, we don't have the technical expertise. Uh, we don't have the, the, currently the technical tools to supplement Twitter. We also have that this particular bad is taking a very uh, ripple negative effect on investor confidence, which is going to in, in, which is going to actually result in losses in millions of dollars in investment already made wow. um, because people are actually making exits as we speak and also um, prospective investment into Nigeria. So this has a ripple negative effect across multiple sectors and especially in the tech industry.
Okay, well, that's scary, but let me come to Shagun. Shagun, can you hear me now? Uh, Shagun, can you hear me? I. All right, well, um, so that we can let Mr. Kalawale go. Finally, Kalawale, uh, you just heard Confidence state that there will be monitoring if we do have these firewalls, meaning that conversations might be listened into uh, and, and meaning that people can also be targeted. Um, how do we make sure that everything that the government decides to do, if they finally, you know, go with it, is done constitutionally and the rights of the average Nigerian is not trampled on? Uh, I think I think we can take one of the bonds That's why you cannot uh, join us in this conversation. <laughs> uh, that, that being said, um, the proper way would be to pass laws and even legislation to create a legal framework for all this. But that itself is a problem. And we've seen the government try to do that with the eight speech bill, the social media bill, and some parts of the NGO bill. Ultimately, it is not about the legal process. It is about the trust that the people have of those who are going to implement those laws that they don't use it against the people. So from what confidence has said about the, the likelihood, I, I like you of monitoring if there is a firewall in place. The question that we need to ask is what is the motive of government for having a firewall? We can define that motive now. That doesn't mean that's, that's a rocket science. It is to stop us from engaging along the lines of what the government defines as not good for us. So we have given that government that right to define what we should hear, what we should not hear by way of information, and what we hear or see or what determines how we engage and what we, what we say. Uh, so that itself is, is bad. I don't see in any legal framework that will um, that will help the people. Well, Having said that, there are constitutional provisions that clearly provide that if any law is passed either by the state as of assembly or the national assembly that is in conflict with the constitution, the constitution will prevail. And because constitutional provisions of privacy are paramount, naturally any law that tries to abrogate from those rights will be null and void of and of no effect. But the question is, do Nigerians trust this government to have a law that gives them any kind of power, any semblance of power, to regulate what we see and hear? I think I want to find the negative. Um, Mr. Shopitor, can you hear me now? Uh, unfortunately, today is not a good day for uh, Shegu Shopital's line. Of, I guess that his line has been banned too. But uh, finally, Kola Wale, um, the, the, the excuse that the government keeps giving, and you just asked my other question, because I was going to ask that, look, we are already having, we had had town hall uh, meetings, we had had um, hearings on how to tweak our constitution, and, and people are still debating on the sincerity on the part of us, uh, our legislators and the government to, you know, make laws that would one way or the other favor the people. As, the fa as, as a matter of fact, we have complained about the 1999 um, constitution as amended as part of the problems that we're facing today in the country. So if we are going to trust them more to deal with how we express ourselves on social platforms, can we trust them to make the right choices for us? But the federal government continuously points to Twitter as a platform that's trying to balkanize the nation. As this is an insinuation they keep making. Is Twitter really trying to balkanize Nigeria? And what do they get out of it if that really is the case? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't purport to speak for Twitter, but the context and antecedents that we understand. The way news travel around countries like Nigeria with the high population of the rural and um, educated people. I doubt that Twitter is something government to watch. Look at WhatsApp, for instance. Before you wake up, you find uh, 20 messages, including 17 videos and some pictures uh, taken last year, uh, said to be taken uh, this morning on your phone. Does that mean you have to ban or suspend uh, WhatsApp? No, I don't think so. And saying Twitter is a problem, it's just shying away from the problems we have, the socioeconomic and the political issues that we have that are not caused by Twitter. 
And I would say clearly that those problems too are not caused by President Buhari. No, the day before him, for the question, what has this administration done to solve those problems? And if I'm any, the constitution is going to go a long way to solve those problems, and I believe it does, then it should be amended in that line. But as to whether we can trust government with any kind of legislation that takes away our rights, particularly the freedom of expression, I wouldn't want to. Uh, I wouldn't want to take that. Uh, Okay. Well, we're out of time. I want to thank I want to thank Confidence Stavely. She is a cybersecurity expert. Kalawala Oluwadari is of Serap. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. All right. Thank you very much. Well, we'll take a short break now. When we return, we discuss a suggested method to end insecurity as soon as possible. The those who are suggesting it, we'll get to find out after the break. <laughs>